This lesson is part of a course at Programming Electronics Academy. If you'd like to get access to the full course and all the materials related to this training, check out Programming Electronics Academy, where you can get access to all of these lessons and all of the coursework we offer. I hope you find this extremely helpful. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more videos like this. Let's start with voltage regulators. A linear voltage regulator is an electronic device which is designed to maintain a specific and constant DC voltage at its output, even if the input voltage or the load conditions change. So typically, a voltage regulator has three terminals, an input, a ground and an output. If the voltage regulator is supposed to maintain 5 volts or 3.3 volts, as we've got with the Arduino board, then the input voltage must be higher than that amount. The input voltage level is allowed to fluctuate, but it should be higher than the output. The regulators used on the Arduino are of the low dropout variety. This means that the 5 volt regulator needs at least 6.2 volts at the input in order to guarantee that stable 5 volts on the output. Similarly, the 3.3 volt regulator will require 3.58 volts and higher at the input to operate properly. These regulators also have limits on the maximum input voltage that can be applied, as well as the amount of current that they can produce at the output. Here's the specifics for both of the regulators. So for the 5 volt regulator, the minimum input voltage is 6.2 volts. The maximum input voltage is 20 volts. And the maximum output current is 1 amp. For the 3.3 volt regulator, the minimum input voltage is 3.58 volts. The maximum input voltage is 16 volts. And the maximum output current is 150 milliamps. Let me reiterate one of the points we just talked about, and that is the voltage at the input of the linear regulator, it needs to be higher than that stable output that it's gonna provide. So for the five volt regulator, the five volt regulator is going to output five volts, but in order to do that, it needs at least 6.2 volts or higher. The 3.3 volt regulator, it's going to output a nice, constant, stable 3.3 volts. But in order to do that, you have to provide 3.58 volts to its input. Quite some time back, I started my own business. And I'm really glad that I had a friend who is a lawyer who can kind of help me out with that. But where do you turn if you don't have a friend who's a lawyer and knows how to do all that starting a business kind of stuff? Well, one place you can turn is Zen Business. They can help you take the guesswork out of actually getting your business started. They can help you form an LLC and get your business EIN super fast. So if you want to get into business, then check out Zen Business. Check out our description for a link to Zen Business. So as a case in point here, take a look at the block diagram and notice how the output from the 5 volt regulator is fed into the input of the 3.3 volt regulator. Based on the table, the 5 volt at the input of the 3.3 regulator and the 1 amp current capacity are just about perfect input parameters for that 3.3 volt regulator to function properly. Now, do you notice something about that input voltage range supported by these regulators? It's kind of pretty big. I mean, look at that. For the 5 volt regulator, you can supply all the way from 6.2 volts up to 20 volts. That's like almost a 14 volt spread. With the 3.3 volt regulator, you're looking at about 3.6 volts all the way up to 16 volts. That's also a big spread. It's really important to note that if the specified input voltage is appreciably higher than the minimum required, then there's gonna be some inefficiencies in the regulator's operation. So what am I talking about here? What's gonna happen? is if you're supplying a ton of power to that regulator, the regulator is going to end up wasting power, and in the process, it could overheat or run hot. So let's talk about 
two different examples here where we're applying an appropriate amount of power in a situation where we might be overpowering the regulator. So let's say that you're supplying seven volts as the input to the five volt regulator. This is above the 6.2 volts that's necessary, and it actually has a good cushion in case the load increases, maybe causing that input voltage to drop a little bit. So that seven volts gives us a little bit of room to accommodate for that. Let's also assume that the current consumed is 500 milliamps. This means that the input power handled by the regulator is seven volts times 0.5 amps, which is 3.5 watts which is just fine. The regulator is happily regulating the seven volts down to five volts, it's quite happy. Now, if instead of the seven volts, let's say you connect 12 volts as the input to the five volt regulator. It's still gonna regulate it down to five volts at the output and consume 500 milliamps. However, its power consumption will now increase to 12 volts times 0.5 amps, which is six watts. That is, 2.5 watts of extra power that's being completely wasted and dissipated in the form of heat. Now in both cases, we have the regulator providing a nice stable five volt supply at the required load current, but the 12 volt input case causes unnecessary heat problems and it needlessly drains the power source, which is a major issue if you're trying to power with batteries because you don't want to drain your battery. So even though the five volt regulator is spec'd to handle a maximum of 20 volts for input, it isn't advisable to operate it at that high input voltage level, especially when there are components connected to the five volt pin drawing appreciable current. Well, I hope you found that helpful. If you wanna learn more about all this Arduino programming stuff, make sure to check out our training program at programmingelectronics.com. I would love if you could like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Take it easy and I'll see you soon.